welcome back to The Average, or welcome to The Average if you're new here. My name is Steph. I am the so-called average artist. Don't ask me why I called myself that. It's been years. It's stuck. It's happened. It's over. Um, these are some ink pens that I'm going to be drawing with today. I know that they're all pen tail ones. We got these two in Japan. So they're in Japanese, the writing, so I can't tell you what, like, ones they are, but they're the brush pens. Despite the colour, they're both just black ink. This is another Pentel one that is just beautifully pink and it's just another brush pen and it comes with different barrels that you can put in. So I have extra barrels in case I need them of ink. And we're ready to go. I've already started, as you can see, I have drawn the outside of my parents' house, this little view. And then also this like baby that is my niece's, um, it's called Timmy, I think. <laughs> or Tommy, I can't remember. Um, it's kind of creepy because his arm is broken. And I hope she doesn't see this video because she's gonna be like, it's not creepy. It's not creepy. Um, and I'll be like, sorry, it's kind of a bit creepy. Um, so I thought I'd continue the theme and just continue drawing this spread and you guys can come along with me. This one has a little sticker on it. Uh, this is Casey Golden's washi tape, by the way, in case you don't know. Very, very nice. But I put it around this because this is like my rough one. That's sort of running out of ink and I use it to just kind of build texture. I've seen people use those uh, water pens, you know those pens that are filled with water that are used for watercolour. People use it with a little bit of ink and then they can get like a wash of ink. These are all waterproof so you can use um, watercolours over the top. Basically if it's water based I believe you can use water based colours over the top. I think I can also use alcohol markers once it's fully dry. Um, I think it does smudge a little bit, but I'm kind of not bothered by smudging. Anyway, let's continue. I'm just doing like random stuff across the page, I think. So this drawing is going to be just, you know, finished, basically. Um, even though I'm not sitting outside anymore and I'm nowhere near it. My voice is really croaky. I need some coffee. So if you're joining me today, what is your beverage of choice? I don't know. Do you drink coffee? Do you drink tea? Do you not even like hot drinks? Maybe not. I don't seem to know you for your life. But yeah, I just got a picture of these tulips that are growing in my parents' garden. Or were growing, I think. I haven't actually seen them recently, but this is a while ago. This is in April that I took this picture, so maybe they are long gone. I don't know. But I just want to practice doing like freehand drawing with ink. And I'm just getting excited about possibility of just using ink pens again a bit more because I used to use them all the time I used to use ink a lot more now I use just alcohol markers and like a hard black pencil but maybe in the future maybe I could use inks I don't know I'm just playing around it's just a little dabble in a test so the thing with brush pens that's so hard is that they are kind of hard to control but you do get like a unique kind of line with them which is always nice and if you're like an expert at them you can control the thickness and the quality of the line I am not an expert I am always claiming to be average at best at everything that I do but you know master of none something of few I can't what is it what's that saying I'm, I'm good at I'm okay at a lot of things and not a master of anything. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. Um, which is kind of cool because I can do a lot of different things and be kind of okay, but not the best. And I don't care. I just don't care about being the best anymore. It's irrelevant because there'll always be someone better than you. And there'll always be someone not as good. So it doesn't matter. Okay, guys, you got that? Pro tips, thanks for coming to my TED talk. But yeah, I'm just practicing free hand drawing back to the original statement um, with ink pens because 
it's just a really good way to make your brain as well commit to the line because it can be quite scary because you can't rub it out and stuff but it makes you more confident with your line work or so i've been told you know that's what people say so we gotta gotta try it out um for the people um i am <laughs> the reason that i've suddenly become so suddenly infatuated with ink again is because i recently read emily carroll's latest graphic horror novel and i don't know if you guys have heard of that or who she is but she is a incredible uh, comics artist who usually does horror she did like into the woods short story stories i think it's a compilation of short stories but anyway i digress because the point was that she had a new book out that i recently finished last night called a guest in the house and it was so nice and all the pages were just ink and um like ink washes and some pages were colored like a few of them but you can tell that she had done them with ink and i just think it was so beautiful and it just reminded me of how I used to draw a long time ago when I was like in university and stuff, I used to be obsessed with inks and then I got ink pens and I was like, these are so hard, but I love using them. Um, so yeah, I was like, maybe, maybe I can go back to, to ink pens for a little bit, try them out, even though they're scary because the line weights are just so difficult to control. But if you get used to it, maybe it's okay i don't know it's 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 a it's a difficult one um if you've ever used ink pens before you may be amazing at them but you also might know what i'm talking about and uh, yeah i do enjoy it though it's very like free you do get even though like the lines are not perfect here they're interesting to look at and they evoke something i guess right maybe <laughs> i don't know I hope so. Um, but yeah, I finished her book. Very good. Um, those that know this little thing are going to be like, oh, there's a lighthouse image in it and it's heavily like talked about. And um, well, if you weren't around in my channel years ago, I did. Okay, so my camera stopped recording, but I was talking about Emily Carroll's new book and that there is a lighthouse image in it. And I was just like, oh, it just reminded me of doing my horror comic in case you guys have just, you know, joined. I did a horror comic years ago about a haunted lighthouse and I was just like, reminds me of that. And it was, you know, good times. And it was my first kind of delve into doing horror. So I was very anxious about like it being scary and if it made sense and was the story actually good. And yeah, it just reminded me of all those things, but also just making me think about how I want to do another comic, And but I have so many projects on at the same time. And I was saying that, do you guys get that when you just have so many projects that you don't know what to pick and you kind of stand still and you don't do anything? That's how I'm feeling at the moment. And I just need to pick something and Fort Bubble's coming up. And I'm thinking, the Fort Bubble is a comic convention in Harrogate in Yorkshire. Um, it's coming up in November uh, in the UK. And I'm very excited for it, obviously. And I do have stock and everything, but I just don't have anything new compared to last year. But I also know what things sold well. And last year, my biggest seller was like, a postcard of a cat being lazy in grass and I was like okay so that does well so maybe I should do more of though like more cat imagery but then I obviously like drawing cats um, but I want to do more comics because that's my main thing that's what I want to do and then I was like but I want to finish this story I've written I've written um, a book a, a cozy like fantasy novel and I want to publish that and I want I've got like um somebody waiting to do the cover for me so you know it's just like loads of things at once and I'm like which one do I pick 
And then I've got work. So obviously work is a massive, not a distraction because it's my work, but you know, it takes up most of my time because it's my job. Um, so it's like, what do you pick in your free time? And sometimes you're just tired to do anything, obviously. And sometimes you're just not feeling good. Sometimes it's, it, it's hard to pick. Your time's limited. And I was reading a book last night, uh, Our Wives Under the Sea, and I don't know why, but it really made me think, oh my God, I only have so many hours on this earth and I'm reading this book and I'm doing lots of tick, like I'm watching lots of TikToks and that's how I'm too, like, it just hit me. Like, I don't have, you know, <laughs> it's getting a bit deep um, for morning, but you know, that much time. What am I doing? I need to hurry up and do my projects if I want to get them done, you know? It sounds like I'm dying, I'm not. I'm just, <laughs> uh, it's something to think about. Anyway, that got really dark really suddenly. But the point is, do you guys have that like stagnation as well? Are you just like, I don't know what to pick. I don't know which project to work on. So I need to just do it. I need to pick one and be like, no, you can't work on the others until this one's done. And it's kind of hard because I think I'm passionate about doing a couple at the same time. I definitely want to just write that book because I've written it, but it needs a lot of like, not padding, but just I've written out like the main scenes kind of thing. And it definitely needs more to it than it has. And I want to add like extra storylines and bits and bobs to make it a little bit more interesting than just like the main story, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's a whole other, that's a whole, whole other thing um, that's been under my thing because this year I had so many plans and then it just went to kapoop. If I can say that, uh, yeah, because I just like, I got very depressed at the beginning of the year and I had to take time off work and everything. Um, so now it's like, okay, I'm playing catch up with myself and I shouldn't be like that really because no, <laughs> it should be like, okay, you took a rest, took a break, that's fine, That's that happens. But now I'm just like, no, I missed out on all this and now I have to have to catch up and do them all, all these projects really quickly and it's just, no, that's not how it works, you know, like, chill. Um, sometimes stuff happens um, and that's it. I also took this picture of my dad's tomatoes that he's growing. Can you see that? Like, incredible. Um, I was like, this is a very beautiful bowl of tomatoes. <laughs> so I'm going to be drawing them, but I don't want to draw them here. I want to draw them, like, away from this section. So for these two drawings, I used this pen, and you can kind of tell the difference. It's much thinner than this brush pen, so maybe we'll go with this one for these drawings of this tomato. Uh, realness. I don't know why I said tomato realness. That's very uh, 2017, isn't it? Still relevant. Um, also, I did a very wonky bowl, but we don't mind. We kind of like wonky lines around here, okay? If anyone asks, we like wonky lines. It's fine. It's completely fine. But yeah, that's the story of how everything is going for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I realise you guys are watching this video because you probably just want to see someone drawing and you don't want to hear them whinging about their, their projects and stuff, but maybe you're in the same boat. I feel like a lot of us are. And uh, it can be hard to choose a project or even to get an idea for a project in the first place. Sometimes, sometimes you have like no ideas and you're like, hello, can I get a break here? Can I do something? Like you feel no inspiration. And then 10 ideas come all at once, like buses. And it's very annoying, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, what can you do about it? I'm kind of being a bit loose with this tomato image because I feel like if the tomatoes aren't in the right place, it's not that big of a deal because you're still going to be able to read that it's a bowl of tomatoes. But yeah, let's just see how it turns out. After this, I really actually wanted colour in this page. Colour in. I love colouring in. Um, so it will be quite nice to use these alcohol markers that Artex sent me. Uh, not Artex, Himmy sent me a while ago. 
and I'm still using them, I really like them. They're like a cheap alternative to Copics, basically, but then there are a lot of cheap alternatives, to be honest, at the moment. Like I said, Artex have a few, uh, Uhuhu have a few, and I think they're all like reasonably good quality. Um, obviously, like, it sucks, but Copics are obviously the best because they're expensive. That's why they're the best. Um, usually that is the case, but well, sometimes it's not, but it is in this sense. Um, but you don't need to pay top dollar just to get some color down, basically, you know? Um, I don't wanna. I don't wanna. <laughs> These are really good pens anyway, so what's the difference? I'm sorry about my complete rambling, but I'm trying to draw and ramble at the same time is kind of difficult. But if you guys enjoy these long rambly videos, let me know because today I'm just filming and then I'm just gonna pop this, pop this video into um, Adobe Premiere and then just be like, yep, slap some music on it and then bish bash bosh, here I am. Do you like this video? It's very chill. <laughs> I'll probably edit out the bits where I'm sipping, sipping coffee for those people that don't like mouth noises because I hate them too. So I completely get it. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's all you're getting from me, guys. But I, I, I kind of like these raw, honest videos a little bit. They seem a bit more chill and maybe people like them. I don't know. This is just fun to just sit and draw with you guys and I hope that you are drawing hmm hmm are you drawing called out um unless you are drawing they're not called out but also no pressure don't draw if you don't want to <laughs> but also pressure draw no no pressure but also if you don't do this pro <laughs> joking ay, ay, ay. this is like my brain this is my brain on coffee okay this is a very like very abstract um, impression of the bowl of tomatoes that I showed you because it just kind of looks nice but no it doesn't look quite quite right but me and I kind of like these big pen tool brushes because you can get a bit of texture with them like if you can see that the ink is a bit dry you can sort of push it around a little bit, whereas these ones are just like, the ink is flowing, you have to put a line down, you have to go, do it now, or you're going to suffer. Um, yeah, so that's the story of the ink pens. Let's see if I can find another image to draw on my phone. Oh, I went, um, ballooning, is it called ballooning? Uh, hot air balloon. I went in a hot air balloon. Uh, in May and it was so incredible like we just took off and it was scary a little bit like scary because you're just in this basket like this woven shaky basket and you're like maybe this could fall out under me and I wouldn't I, 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 you can't do anything uh, but also it was fun <laughs> and then after about 20 minutes it was a little bit boring because of the landscape that I was in was just kind of the same but it wasn't boring it was just like because you had to get up really early to catch this balloon <laughs> catch this balloon and after a while it was like so soothing because you're just being rocked in the breeze and it's like so quiet and then every now and again the guy will blast the air the hot air um and the fire will be like and you're like suddenly ah, jolted out of this relaxation that you're in just watching the world go by and it's so scary because you're just suddenly shocked awake basically but it, I was thinking like if I could just float along in this sky it would be the best nap I ever had in my whole life and I know that's a bit of a waste of an air trip but it was just I was like this would be so nice to just sit in like a little hammock and just float along oh so lovely but no that's not why we we went there. We went there for the experience. <laughs> I 
I love how I'm like, how can I make a nap out of this experience? Um, I love sleeping, in case you guys didn't know. That's like my number one favorite thing to do in the whole world. I work to sleep, basically. When I can go to my bed, this is a job well done. I'm like, okay, good for you, you did it. When I have to get out of my bed, I'm like, no, I don't enjoy this. Um, not at all. So in my life, if I can nap, I will take that route. But yeah, it was so beautiful. It was just um, in Spain, um, floating around all these fields of like crops and it was very yellowy greens, um, beautiful. And I've got an image here of it and I'm just gonna draw the landscape. Also my dad was like, my dad somehow we guffed it up that he was like in another balloon and me and my sister were in one, one balloon. And just like, uh, Dad, we can't find our balloon because you have to like drive out into a field to meet this person who has the balloon. It's very dodgy. And, and then and then get in the balloon and fly away with them, basically. Um, so we drove out to this field and we were like, Dad, we can't find the person. We don't know where we're going. And he's like, here's the number of the guy because my dad like organized it or had the contact details at least. Um, here's the number of the guy. And then he suddenly was like, oh, no, I'm off, I'm away. And he like jumped into the air balloon and hung up on us. And we were like, ah, thanks, cheers. Okay, cool. Um, but anyway, we caught up with the balloon driver. Balloon driver, that's a, yeah, I'm gonna go with it. Balloon driver. And we got in our balloon and then we could just see my dad's balloon in the distance and it kept like bobbing down. I kept being like, oh, he's landing. He's gonna land. And then he just didn't then they would go up again. And I think they were just trying to get like, catch the air currents to go somewhere. Cause did you know that you can't like steer? Well, you probably did know this. You can't really steer a hot air balloon. You have to kind of just let it take you where it takes you, but also you can steer it. Cause if you go down into the air currents that are going a certain direction or up into the air currents that are going a certain direction, you can kind of like judge it like that. Apparently, I have no idea how they read that and um, good for them for being experts at that. I'm never going to study that or even elaborate anymore because I read a Google thing about it once and that's enough, you know, I'm done. Um, let's colour these in a little bit because why not? Let's, let's put a bit of colour on the page. I was like, so reading Emily Carroll's book and she's just got like black and white and then, you know, washes of grey. And I was like, that would be so cool to do my next comic like that. But I think I just can't resist colour um, at all. Like just, just then, I was like, no, this is going to be a page of ink. But no, it's not. It's going to have some colour on it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's just how I am. But anyway, that is the story of me hot air ballooning and the adventure that that was. And it was very tiring because I had to get up at like... 4 a.m. and I don't appreciate that. I didn't like that. No, did not like that at all. And then when me and my sister couldn't find the balloon man, we were like, we'd better get on that balloon because we have driven, you know, <laughs> across the country a little bit. Well, a couple of hours across the country. The previous night, stayed in a hotel. We better find that balloon. Gotten up at 4 a.m. Uh, we did, to be fair. So happy end of the story. And it was great. And also afterwards we went for like breakfast with everyone we were in the balloon with and they only offered like ham on sandwiches which is like ham sandwiches and we were like oh um because me and my sister are vegetarian we're like can we have can we have them without ham and everyone was like what because <laughs> uh, I think everyone was Spanish and they just couldn't really get the idea that we were vegetarian they were like the person woman next to me was like I'll have her ham. I'm like, that's not really how I want it to work. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was funny. I was just like, yeah, uh, yeah. And then they, it was so funny because they, because we're English, they thought we couldn't really understand them. And I can understand a bit of Spanish, like a bit of Spanish, most, well, like a lot of Spanish. And like, they were just talking about us. And I was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, right here. Like, sorry. <laughs> he just thought we were very strange because we we're vegetarian, but yeah, whatever. It was funny. Um, but yeah, you know, go up in the air, and then don't eat meat. That's the choice that we made. Uh, 
uh, I don't know if I want to make the pot the same colour as... Because I want like a limited colour palette on this page because I think it would be nice to tie it together that way. But maybe not, maybe just like sections of colour. Um, maybe, maybe. I know that the pram is pink because I remember it being pink. This is a pram by the way in case you guys couldn't see that. It's very bright pink I've just realised and it works for the lilies but it might not necessarily work for this like cute little baby's pram. That's not that cute because the baby inside is kind of creepy and broken. Uh, yeah. But I think, yeah, I want to do like a stylized page of just a few colours, I guess. So let's try that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the tomatoes, but that is a question for another day, which is in five minutes. I need a blue for sure. What blue would go with these colours? Like a really muted blue, I think, which is, you know, looking at my handy guide that I made. I'm so proud of myself doing swatches because I never do swatches. And I swatched all these colours because the tops don't really match so much what they actually are, so I had to. Because when I was doing my uh, drawings of, like, famous women's dresses, I realised I needed to get those colours down because if I don't, then it's not really going to look like that iconic dress because some iconic dresses are iconic because of the way the colour is, basically. It's just like a colour, so... I don't know, just rambling, uh, but yeah, let's see if we can make this look a little bit more interesting because I think it's like visually interesting but then it's also confusing because you can't really see where the, the trees are, the way that I've drawn it and where the sky is. So if I make that more apparent then maybe it would become more visually interesting. There we go, that's where the sky is. A little bit peeking through here maybe. I don't really remember because I'm not outside anymore and I drew this a while ago. But there we go. I think it looks kind of cool like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, stop it. Yeah. And what else? I just want peaks of colour. I need to look at that image of the land again. Um, the balloon area is brown. The area around my dad's balloon is brown. <laughs> That sounded weird. Okay. Greens. Greens. All this was green. So if you just put like a hint of colour, it kind of grounds everything um, within it. Grounds, ha ha, in the hot air balloon, ha ha, grounds. Um, but it grounds the image in reality a little bit if you put like a bit of a background instead of just having it floating around the air. Um, that's a little tip for you guys, you probably knew that already, but sometimes some people don't know things and it's useful to hear. There you go, okay? Uh, yeah. I like the way that these lilies turned out. I know I was like, mm, that pen is like a bit thick, so the line quality is not that nice, but actually I kind of like it with the colour. It's like bold. Mm -hmm. Bold. I need to drink more of my coffee, if you can tell by my voice. If we go over the green as well, it gives a nice like elite shadow effect. Easy. I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Uh, maybe around actually down here. And then the sky is like way off in the distance in this image, but we can do this. And then it kind of connects these images a little bit better. Maybe? I don't know. Um, it's not really blue around him because there's chairs behind him, but what ifs, you know what I mean? Let's just put a little blue. There we go. Okay. Yeah, just for like a shadow. Just to show that it's in the background as well. And the heat is in the foreground. I think it works. Even though this chair is 
like brown and pink. I'm going to do it down here as well. I think we're getting a bit carried away with the shadow there, but I don't care. I don't care. There we go, and some blue here. So then I'm going to then do another green on top so it will look darker. And the rest of the land is kind of yellow, so I'm just going to leave it the colour of the page. Very nice, isn't it? Very good idea. Thanks, guys. Thanks for saying. You didn't, but I'm just going to assume that you are. Okay, where's the tomatoes gone? Mm-hmm. We definitely lost that image, but I will need to look at how they... Look at how they looked, uh, basically, which makes sense. Where are your tomatoes? Somewhere here. There it is. Okay. Um, yeah, all these were green. Very nice. Very green. Very nice. Okay. Um, this one's kind of green, but a bit pink. And I'm going to do pink. I'm going to do pink tomatoes. I know it's a bit weird, but I'm going to because I think it would be cute. This one's a little bit yellowy. So I'm gonna like just, and then this one is definitely pink. Okay, and then the rest are pink, but I think what I'll do is like shadow them with the green because they're like darker red colors. So if I do the whole thing, pink and then shadows, it might look cute. You know what sketchbooks are for, all for experimenting. So here we go. Let's experiment. There we go. Bit of green, bit of green. There we go. This looks good. There's a piss shine here. Oh, what I would could do is put like a dot of shine on each of them as well because they are so shiny, sparkly, glowy. Uh, green stem, green stem, a little bit of green, pink, these ones are super red so they don't have any green. Yeah, yeah I kind of like it. And I'm going to do the bowl blue, blue, again to tie it in with the rest of the image. Have a little bit of a colour palette going on, you know. What might be cool is to uh, cool people do this, so I'm going to do it where they put the colour palette at the top. Just to show what we're working with here. Bit of green, bit of pink, bit of brown. Okay. Oh wait, I have brown. I could use brown in this tomato dish. Yeah, I will. Some of them are a bit more tricky. Kind of works. Yeah. Why not? Kind of works. I mean, do they look like tomatoes? Questionable. Am I happy with them? Yes. Now, do I have my white? Yes, I do. My white jelly roll pen. These are really good. They just go over everything instantly. Very nice. The white dot for you and for me to have like nice shiny tomatoes shiny shiny shine here shine there no shine here no shine there what do you think uh, yeah, so that's it basically, but I want to just put a bit more colour in this image, I think. Just to differentiate it a little bit more from the leaves and stuff. Even though I like the idea of doing something just black and white, I don't know if I have the talent to do that yet, because when you looked at that, it didn't look like a bunch of just 
mess. I don't know. So, you know, we got to figure that out. <laughs> you want to do something in black and white. You've got to be able to show where everything is, I guess. Well, this was just a quick doodle, so don't judge my whole life. Okay, guys? But, yeah. A little bit. A little bit judge my whole life. Um, so, let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I like it in colour more. I'm always just, I don't know, I'm a colour person, I think. I'm like, yeah, I could do it in black and white because I really like the way that person's done something. Sometimes I let people influence me too much in my art or journey, and it's like, nope, you got to do you, okay? you got to stick to what you know sometimes. But yeah, I guess this is the end of the video. Um, I might draw more on this page, I'm not sure. But it was just fun to chat with you guys. And it's super long anyway. So, you know, probably too long. Um, thanks for watching. And please like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. It really helps me out. Of course, I have to do all the uh, lingo. But thanks for watching. And I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!